Welcome back to Tom Ready Tonight. Now, my next guest is probably best known as a restaurant critic, but also he's been known to tread the boards as an actor, would you believe? In fact, he's had parts in such movies as The General, The Tailor of Panama, and The Butcher Boy. So would you please welcome actor, author, critic, Paolo Tullio! A bottle of red, a bottle of white, it all depends on your appetite. You can have anything you want in our Italian restaurant. That's great. That's you great. Like that, that's did great. You? That's great. That's a, how are you, Paolo? I'm well. I'm that's well. Right. You're very welcome to the couch and to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. No, it's a pleasure. I mean, I had no idea. I've obviously I've seen you in the in the, uh, the restaurant and, and programs like that. But your acting um, <laughs> catalog, well, back catalog. Yeah. I mean, we want to be a bit clear about this. Okay. Um, parts in these movies, they're definitely parts. <laughs> they had names, but uh, really, it's one of those cases like Joanna's first appearance as a Bond girl. If you blinked, uh, you would have probably missed those miraculous few moments yeah. that I was on the screen. But I like to think they were crucial to the movies. I'd say you know. the movie would have collapsed without you. I would have thought so. Yeah. I mean, you were there in the, 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 the <laughs> trailer of Panama, probably third yes. stitch from the left. Yeah, no, that was that was vitally important part. I mean, it was uh, myself and Piers Brosnan in an aeroplane, and I had to point out to him the Panama Canal. Uh, so that was really, you know, that was very, that's, that's, that's absolutely that's crucial. Essential. And of course, there was the usual comments. You know, people saw it. They say that was great, but who's that guy sitting there with Paolo Tullio? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've, you've yes. had heaps of, uh, <laughs> yes, of, of, of jobs and occupations over the years. I mean, uh, I've been a bit of a butterfly. Yeah, but you, you, were, you, you were going to be, I think, a psychologist initially. After yeah, absolutely. And um, where did that end up? Or? Uh, it ended up in the. Uh, I think it was called Grange Gorman in those days. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> What it's called now, it used to have a name of, it used to be called Lunatic Asylum. I don't think they use those words anymore. No. Um, but I worked there for, it must have been about a year, with a, a wonderful psychiatrist, a man called uh, Joe Fernandez. And my job was basically to test people when they came in. You had to do an IQ test, and they had this thing called a personality inventory, which you had to ask these questions, and at the end of it, you could theoretically assess what sort of personality they yeah. had. Actually, I kind of felt it was all a bit bollocks, really. But, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> That's a scientific uh, expression <laughs> for those of you who watch it. Absolutely, yes, it is a, it's a, a, very, <laughs> a, a very precise yeah. description of it. Um, so after about a year, no, I, I stopped doing it. That's nice. Well, I'm here in the city of Turin, which is the capital of the Piedmont region of Italy, at its northwest corner. This is a picherine, this is coffee and chocolate, and it was invented right here in this cafe. But tempting as the city of Turin may be, it's not for me. I'm heading off into the hills, where I want to seek out good food and good wine. But then, what else would you expect me to do? And what do you do with all those grape skins once you've squeezed the wine out of them? Well, the answer is you bring them right here, to the oldest grappa factory in Italy. Well, we've come here to see the Mazzetti Distillery. I'm with Laura Mazzetti, sixth generation of grappa maker here. We're going to go look around the process, see how it's done. A bit of luck, we might even get to taste some. Come over there, Grazie. Now, what about that tasting I was promised? Well, after a lifetime of drinking the stuff, I've now seen how it's made. And uh, now we're about to taste a 1992, which is one that's been aged in Slovenian oak. Oh, that's lovely. And this is another place where the hazelnuts end up, here in the hazelnut tart. This really is my idea of a gastronomic holiday. It's just fabulous. They will need a kiss, that'll probably chip them out. There you go, you run into people who are passionate about their food. Silvio Pistone is a farmer and a cheesemaker, but this morning he's going to take me on a hunt for some of those gorgeous porcini mushrooms that the Italians love so much. And wouldn't you know it, they're springing out of the mountainside and free for the taking. Now what Silvio is telling me is mushrooms respond to the moon. So when the moon is waxing, when it's growing, they're firmer and stronger. But once we've gone into a waning moon, which is what we have at the moment by three or four days, they start to go soft. Right, um, Silvio and I, I think we're going to go and have our lunch now. Siamo mangiare. 
voglia di fare qualcosa, ti lo faccio un flitz. I think one of the great pleasures, of course, is when you come off the tourist track, when you're away from beaches and you're away from places like Tuscany where everybody turns up every summer. And these are very friendly people. They're open-hearted. They take you into their house. They'll share bread and cheese with you and wine. That's the kind of Italy you should be exploring, not the holiday resorts. Go find the real Italy up here in the mountains of Piedmont. Fabulous. Now, doesn't that look good enough to eat? I'm going to check before I do anything else. I'm yeah. going to taste the risotto. Right, here we go. He's now going to say something scathing. Uh, this is cooked to perfection. It's lifted. The curse of the result. Finally lifted. Finally. Watch it come ah, off the bone. Yes. That's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. I always see a five as being an excellent meal, not necessarily faultless. The issue is, would you be prepared for two people to spend 150 euros for it in a restaurant? Brendan and Carol's meal when I got the soul au banan, uh, which was really a very unpleasant dish altogether. One of the important necessities if you want to be a restaurant reviewer is you really cast our digestion. Oh yes, oh look, oh yes, oh come to daddy. Come to that, that's Carlo. Carlo, that does look good. Look. Oh, yes. Look. Oh, yes. Oh, those are good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are good. I found the particular piece of beef that I got was tough. Did you like the stuff around? I like everything around it was perfect. The execution was brilliant, the pastry was good, the mushroom du sel was good. All of those bits were great. That's what I like least. This has come from a farm where, where the, the beast has been well looked after. Well spotted, Paolo. I kind of fell in love a bit with the Melba sorbet. Um, oh, okay. I thought it was just delicious. But I think there's a problem with designing a menu when your starters are a soup or a salad. Mm. By best without, well, a shadow of a doubt with the desserts. So I thought they were both spectacular. They were extraordinary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it, it really was, it was wonderful to end the meal on such a high note. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Hot chocolate pudding and saw and it was that gooey lovely... in the middle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was yeah. just the closest thing to an orgasm I've had on a plate. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Love, Paolo, your best and worst in tonight's menu, please. My best and worst of tonight's meal. Well, I thought the spinach, which came with the turbot, was spectacularly good. Oh, you and I thought that... I thought the green beans were absolutely delicious. What did I like least? I feel a well, however coming well, well, <laughs> Obviously, there is something I had to like well, least. Well, yes, you were asked, um, you asked this. I yes, did, yes. Um, and I think it was probably the sweet meat tart. Not, not because it was badly made or anything like that. It's just, it was a dish that d didn't thrill me as much as the other ones had. I thought your main courses were spectacular. Specifically, I loved the haddock. I just thought it was delicious. And like Tom, I have never actually finished a plate in a restaurant. I did it tonight. I cleared it completely, emptied it. It was, it was one of the best dishes I think I've ever eaten. <laughs>